If you are just joining us here at 529, we're following breaking news in the Venetian neighborhood just north of NAS Jax. JSO is on the scene of a crash right now that involved at least two JSO cruisers. You can see the police car, at least one of them, right there behind the fence. We made a map to give you a closer look at exactly where this is happening. This is near the intersection of Roosevelt Boulevard and Yacht Club Road. We have a crew on the scene right now, and we will bring you another live report coming up in about half an hour. We're minutes away from an update on a crash involving a Jacksonville Sheriff's Office cruiser. Sky 4 just blew over the scene. It started as a pursuit that ended in this wreck. We'll have an update at 6. Plus, pitched. Developing tonight, we're working to get information about a crash involving JSO officers this afternoon in the Venetian neighborhood near NAS Jacks. We spotted two crashed police cruisers, including one inside a fence on Roosevelt Boulevard at Yacht Club Drive. Video also shows a crashed black Lexus there. And nearby, the neighbor nearby says that it was crazy to watch all of this unfold. Hanging out in my backyard, I hear a bunch of sirens approaching. Like I said, it sounded like gunshots. It was just pow, 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 pow. Uh, and uh, I ran out front and saw they crashed. That was uh, into my neighbor's fence right over there. And we reached out to JSO at the scene and at headquarters, and the agency's not sharing any information at this time. In more local news, several cars were damaged this afternoon during a dramatic high-speed police chase on Jacksonville's west side. This is a video from Sky 4 over Roosevelt Boulevard, just south of the intersection with Timaquana Road. One police cruiser went through a fence and hit a tree. News for Jack's reporter Eric Avenier is joining us live tonight from JSO headquarters to explain what happened. Eric, what are the police saying about this? Well, all I can tell you is that hours after everything unfolded, including the uh, scene being cleared, we are still waiting for an update from police to explain what exactly happened and what led up to that chase. Now, only witnesses so far have spoken to us on camera about what they saw and what they heard. You're looking at the aftermath of what witnesses say was a police chase involving more than a dozen patrol vehicles that were after the driver of a white pickup truck. From the air, we can see the chase ended in a vacant lot off Roosevelt Boulevard, just south of Timaquana Road, where police cars are surrounding a white pickup truck. But further down the road, we can also see damaged patrol cars and a black civilian vehicle with significant front-end damage. And from the ground, a better view of a JSO patrol car that crashed through a fence and went into a woman's yard where it appears to have hit a tree. The property owner says she was inside her house when just before 3 p.m. she heard a loud bang. She says she went outside and saw the officer standing next to the car and noticed smoke was coming from up under the front hood. Her next door neighbor says he was in his backyard when the chase led to several crashes. And all of a sudden I hear pow, pow, pow. It sounded like gunshots. I was scared for a second there. Uh, as soon as I heard it, I ran outside. I called my room and I said, yo, let's go outside. Let's see what's going on. I see a couple cop cars uh, flying past, going really fast, um, especially on this road. And then all of a sudden I see a bunch more. It's probably about 30 in total that came by. And then uh, come outside, I see the accident that happened right next door. A News for Jack's viewer who did not want to be identified says he was sitting at a red light at the intersection of San Juan Avenue and Roosevelt Boulevard when a white pickup truck blew past him. He says he counted at least 20 JSO patrol units in pursuit of the pickup. He says by the time he drove up on the crash scene, he counted at least a half dozen JSO cruisers with damage along with some civilian cars. And even at this hour, it is still unclear if the driver of that pickup truck uh, was captured. And again, we are still trying to figure out what led up to all of this. Reporting live from outside JSO headquarters, Eric Avignet, Channel 4, The Local Station. Eric, thank you. We're working to get information about a crash involving JSO officers this afternoon in the Venetian neighborhood near NAS Jacks. We spotted a crashed police car inside a fence on Roosevelt Boulevard at Yacht Club Drive and a JSO SUV with damage outside of that fence right nearby. You see them both right there. Video also shows a crashed black Lexus. You see that there. We reached out to JSO at the scene and at headquarters and so far the agency hasn't given us any more information. 
also breaking right now. Two men are arrested in connection to the breaking news we brought you yesterday. This is Action News Jackson 5. I'm John Bachman. And I'm Emily Turner in for Tanika Hughes. JSO says this crash that we showed you last night started when detectives spotted a truck with two men wearing full face masks. Detectives then ran the tags and realized it was stolen and from there a chase began. After investigators tried to pull the truck over during the chase, two JSO cruisers hit each other, causing one to hit and run through a fence. The other cruiser hit a car not involved in that chase. It hit that car head on. The driver of the car struck was taken to the hospital. The suspect's truck later ran into a pole. One of the suspects was taken to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. Police say they found a gun in that truck and right now both of the men in masks are facing charges. New details tonight about the police chase and crash we told you about at 7 last night in Jacksonville, just north of NAS, Jax. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office says the two men were wearing full face masks. They were driving a stolen truck, according to police. Officers tried to pull them over, and during the chase, two JSO patrol cars crashed into each other. One of them went through a fence. The other hit a car. The person in that vehicle was taken to the hospital, but was not seriously hurt. The officers were not injured. The two suspects in the truck were arrested. Police did recover a firearm from the truck. Live from the local station, the 10 o'clock news starts now. Right now, a 10 new video showing the moment after two suspects inside a truck crash following a pursuit on Jacksonville's west side. The cop was coming right behind him, mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh my god, he's about to jump out. The guy jumped out, we all in black. That chase and crash happened yesterday afternoon on Roosevelt Boulevard near Timaquana Road. Police say two JSO cruisers and a civilian vehicle are damaged during the chase. News for Jack's reporter Eric Avenue joining us live from JSO headquarters with new information about how it all started. Eric? Investigators say this all started in the Paxson neighborhood where uh, detectives front front for the JSO gang unit were on patrol and spotted two men wearing full face masks while sitting inside of a, a pickup truck. When they went to run the plate on that truck, it came back uh, stolen. So obviously when they went to pull the truck over, they say the driver didn't stop. And that is what led, they say, to the chase. This cell phone video was recorded by News for Jack's viewer Haley Ray just moments after two men in a stolen pickup truck crashed into a light pole following what witnesses describe as a high-speed chase. And you see all these police cars coming from all different directions, and it was like, oh, goodness. Police say the chase began in the Paxson neighborhood, then moved on to I-95, then on to I-10, and then finally on to Roosevelt Boulevard. The chase ended when the truck crashed in this vacant lot that sits between Roosevelt Boulevard and Ortega Boulevard. An unidentified woman who witnessed the crash could be heard in Ray's cell phone video after she ran into a doctor's office to take cover. He, um, lost control of the vehicle and ran right into the light pole. That was good. And the thing is, I thought, this looks weird because a cop was coming right behind him. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my God, he's about to jump out. The guy jumped out all in black. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm in my black. I'm in my black car right out there, way by the road, oh. right there. Yeah. And he jumped out. And I jump out of my car and run in here because I was literally had the door open. Police say one suspect was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries, and the other was arrested at the scene. Ray and her coworker witnessed the arrest. The truck doors opened up, and then they apprehended him. What was going through your mind when you saw that? Um, I was wondering what he did. <laughs> and why the police chase. Kathleen Lee also heard the crash from her office and then walked outside and saw multiple police arriving from different directions. I was frightened. I didn't know what was going on and um, didn't come close because I didn't know if there were guns involved. A half mile down the road, another crash scene connected to the chase. Police say during the pursuit, two JSO cruisers crashed into each other, causing them both to cross the median into oncoming traffic. One cruiser hit an oncoming vehicle, sending the driver of that vehicle to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The other cruiser crashed through a fence. None of the officers were injured. Now, although investigators say that they found a gun inside that stolen truck, JSO has yet to identify those two men uh, who are now suspects uh, that are now in custody. Reporting live, Eric Avignet, Channel 4, The Local Station.
Eric, the sheriff's office often shares information the same day a huge incident like this happens. You're right, they often do share on the same day, but for some reason, we didn't get that information yesterday. In fact, uh, I would say between last night and this morning, uh, there were lots of posts on social media asking more questions about what happened. And I was myself even started receiving uh, emails from- Tonight at 11, new details into a police chase on Jacksonville's west side. It ended when the suspects crashed in a vacant lot. We want to show you a cell phone video that was recorded after the crash on Roosevelt Boulevard. Police say that they arrested one suspect. The other was sent to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries before he was arrested. News for Jack's reporter Eric Avenier joining us live from JSO headquarters with more on how this chase began. Eric? Yeah, tonight we are learning that this chase actually began in the Paxson area after police spotted two men wearing a full face mask while sitting in a in a pickup truck. Now, when they went to uh, when police went to run the tags on that truck, it came back that the, the truck came back as a stolen vehicle. Obviously, when they went to pull the vehicle over, uh, police say the driver would not stop. This light fixture inside a vacant lot between Roosevelt Boulevard and Ortega Boulevard is now destroyed after police say two men in a stolen pickup truck crashed into it. Investigators say the suspects were trying to flee multiple officers during a chase that spanned several miles. Kathleen Lee heard the crash and then walked outside her office across the street and saw... Police cars coming very fast, converging on this particular spot. Over 20 of them by the time they all arrived. What was going through your mind when all this was happening? Frightened. I didn't know what was going on and um, didn't come close because I didn't know if there were guns involved. Also across the street watching this unfold while recording the cell phone video of the scene was Haley Ray and one of her co-workers who locked the door to their medical office after a woman who witnessed the crash ran inside. And after she did came in and shut the door, we were both standing in the windows like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Just trying to take it all in. And more and more police cars kept showing up, and it was just, oh my gosh, what do we do? What do we not do? What is the protocol here? That's because before they saw one suspect taken into custody, they were not sure if there was a danger to the public. And statements from the woman who ran inside made the situation even more frightening. He um, lost control of the vehicle and ran right into the light pole. That was good. And the thing is, I thought, this looks weird because a cop was coming right behind him. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my God, he's about to jump out. The guy jumped out, all in black, and I'm like, <gasps> JSO says one suspect was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries before he was arrested, and the other suspect was arrested at the scene. Meanwhile, just up the road, police were dealing with another crash scene related to the chase. Investigators say during the pursuit, two JSO cruisers crashed into each other, causing them both to cross the median into oncoming traffic. One patrol unit hit an oncoming vehicle, sending the driver of that vehicle to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The other patrol car crashed through a fence none of the officers were injured. Now, although police say they found a gun in that stolen truck, they have yet to identify those two suspects. Reporting live from outside JSO headquarters, Eric Avigay, Channel 4, The Local Station. Thank you, Eric. We have new information about a crash involving two JSO officers. The sheriff's office says that those officers were chasing masked men in a truck that turned out to be stolen. JSO says gang unit officers spotted the men in masks inside a Ford F-150 in the Paxton area. JSO says that they chased the truck to I-95, then south, then west on I-10, and then south on Roosevelt Boulevard. The JSO cruiser and JSO SUV hit each other around Roosevelt at Yacht Club Drive. As we showed you last night, the JSO cruiser crashed through a fence. The SUV, JSO SUV, hit a black SUV head on. JSO says that the officers and the driver of that SUV did not have to go to the hospital. The white truck that they were chasing hit a pole. One of the suspects was sent to the hospital and is expected to live. JSO says they found a gun in the truck. News for Jack starts now. Right now at 6, we're getting a look at last Thursday's police chase of a stolen pickup truck that led to quite a bit of damage. This is new dash cam video given to News for Jax showing police chasing that truck on Roosevelt Boulevard. 
And that chase ended inside a vacant lot where the truck crashed into a light pole. Two people inside the truck were arrested. News for Jack's reporter Eric Avigny joining us from outside JSO headquarters after reviewing the video. Eric, this was actually a private citizen's dash camera video. Yeah, hours after uh, doing an update to that story Friday night uh, with new cell phone video of the truck crash scene, uh, I received an email from a man who wanted to remain anonymous. He says in the email that he was in the middle of that chase along Roosevelt Boulevard and had dash cam video from two different angles of that chase. Now, the first angle is recorded from a rear mounted camera and it shows the stolen pickup truck coming at him from behind at a high rate of speed and then moving into the right lane to go past him. A police SUV is right behind the truck in hot pursuit. Then the forward mounted camera records the vehicle speeding away from him. During the pursuit, multiple JSO cruisers are seen speeding right past him and other motorists to catch up to the chase. And at one point, it looked like the police car, uh, a, a police car turning off a side street, is about to collide with him. Now, police say during the chase, two of their patrol units hit each other before going into oncoming traffic. Now, from Sky 4, we can see where one patrol unit crashes through a fence. We also see where the other police cruiser crashed head on into a car. But from the dash cam audio recorder, we can see, we can hear the voice of the driver who was worried about the people in that black car uh, who were hit by that police cruiser. Okay, obviously we're having some technical difficulties here, but basically what you would have heard in that uh, video, would have, he would have said, oh, he wrecked into a car, those poor people. He felt so bad for the people that were in that black car that were hit head on by that uh, JSO cruiser. Now, one person in that black car was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Coming up later tonight, I'm gonna break down that uh, dash cam video scene by scene along the chase route. Reporting live from outside JSO headquarters, Eric Avignet, Channel 4, the local station. Exclusively on News for Jacks, this new dash cam video shedding light on last week's police pursuit on the west side. Two JSO police cruisers, a civilian vehicle, and a stolen pickup truck were all damaged during the chase. Two suspects were arrested after they crashed into a light pole in a vacant lot between Roosevelt Boulevard and Ortega Boulevard. Let's go right to News for Jacks reporter Eric Avignet, who's been following this story for several days now. He joins us live to break down that newly released yeah, the video was given to me by a man who wanted to remain anonymous. He says that he recently installed two cameras in his car, one looking forward, the other looking backward. And both cameras recorded some very clear footage of the chase. The man who gave me this video says he was traveling south on Roosevelt Boulevard near FSCJ when he started hearing police sirens. His rear window camera recorded this white Ford pickup followed by a police SUV coming up from behind. And then his dash camera recorded this. That police SUV was in hot pursuit of the pickup truck, which was reported stolen. Seconds later... Here comes another police. Then two more officers sped by in the far right lane. Less than a minute later, a line of marked and unmarked police cars with emergency lights and sirens activated sped past in hot pursuit of the stolen pickup truck. At this rate, police are joining the chase on Roosevelt from various side streets. Then miles up the road, traffic slows down because of a roadblock. Oh, he wrecked into a car. Wow, those poor people. This is the location where JSO says during the pursuit, two cruisers crashed into each other before crossing the median into oncoming traffic. One cruiser went through a fence and hit a tree, which you can see here through Sky 4. The other crashed head on into this black car. But when we pause the dash cam video and zoom in, we see the tire marks that lead into the grass median, debris in the road, and other police cars surrounding that wreckage. This is also where traffic was rerouted. But near the end of the detour, we see where the chase came to a vital stop in this vacant lot between Ortega Boulevard and Roosevelt Boulevard. When we pause the video, we see the stolen truck to the right of the screen where it crashed into a light pole. The truck is surrounded by police and this cell phone video that was given to us by News for Jack's viewer Haley Ray provides a different angle of the same crash. By this time, the two suspects who were in the truck were already in custody. 
Now, the driver of that uh, black car that was hit by police was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Meanwhile, police here at JSO headquarters have yet to identify the two suspects they took into custody. Coming up in 11, more on that dash cam video. You will also hear from a retired JSO police officer who is now a uh, private investigator. Hear what he has to say, his, his professional opinion on uh, what we see in that chase. Reporting live, Eric Avignet, Channel 4, The Station. Eric, information about a crash involving two JSO officers we first showed you this video of the crash last week on 16th Street and Melson Avenue. According to the arrest report, two teens are now charged with attempted robbery. They were in a stolen car, but were we are not naming them rather because of their age. So here's how it all unfolded. According to JSO, they say that the gang unit officers spotted the young men in masks inside a Ford F-150 in the Paxson area. They say that they chased the truck to I-95, then south and then west on I-10 and then south on Roosevelt Boulevard. The JSO cruiser and JSO SUV hit each other at about Roosevelt at Yacht Club Drive. Police say that chase last about 17 minutes and uh, the pair eventually exited the car of the truck rather before they were taken into custody tonight on the 10 o'clock news an attorney representing a woman who says she was injured during a recent police chase now questioning whether the pursuit outweighed public safety the police put so many people in harm's way that in no way did this police chase warrant the threat to the public and we've learned 17-year-old Marquise Felton is the driver accused of leading JSO officers on a chase down a busy section of Roosevelt Boulevard in a stolen pickup truck. At one point, one of the police cruisers in hot pursuit crashed into a black SUV, sending the driver to a hospital with a broken foot. News First Jacks reporter Eric Avenier joins us live from JSO headquarters after talking with the crash victim and her lawyer. Eric? Yeah, Tarek, they are filing a lawsuit against JSO on the grounds of negligence. And her attorney says JSO neglected public safety when officers chased a stolen truck down a busy roadway, resulting in his client being injured. Kathleen Holt says she's the victim of a reckless police chase that led to her foot being broken. Last Thursday, when police say they were chasing 17-year-old Marquise Felton in the stolen pickup truck down southbound Roosevelt Boulevard, Holt was traveling in the northbound lane. She says she witnessed the pickup truck and two pursuing JSO police cruisers cross the median into oncoming traffic. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I was scared enough when I saw the suspect vehicle heading that way like oh no but then you know you're getting ready it's like okay what you know your mind's going what can i do what can i do they follow him hope says the two police units were flanking the truck and then he like hits the the officer who's furthest from me and he goes airborne at this point through the that gate she says the truck then forced the police cruiser into her SUV. The impact was so violent that the police push bumper came off the cruiser and was left embedded in the front of her SUV. The crash left her with a broken foot. JSO says it stands by a written statement released last Friday that says in the course of the pursuit, two JSO Mark patrol vehicles struck each other, causing them to cross the center median. One of those Mark units crashed into a fence. The second struck a black SUV. This could have involved a school bus of children. John Phillips is the attorney representing Hope. He says there's a lot of questions about the chase that JSO is not publicly coming out and answering. He also finds it suspicious that JSO never held a news conference to explain what happened since the roadway was shut down for hours and so many officers were involved. It's been five days and there's there's been no real explanation from JSO about what happened or why it happened. Police accountability, procedures related to when chases or pit maneuvers are allowed. The truck that was chased traveled a half mile further north from where Holt was injured before crashing in a vacant lot that sits next to the northbound side of Roosevelt Boulevard. Police say after Felton and another unidentified person were taken into custody, officers found a loaded rifle in the truck with 30 rounds of ammo. Certainly the 17 year old that, that started this should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, but apprehending him shouldn't put dozens or hundreds of civilians at stake. 
Now, the 17-year-old suspect is facing a list of misdemeanor and felony charges. And get this, according to police, he was already a convicted felon prior to this latest arrest. Reporting live from outside JSO headquarters, Eric Avigny, Channel 4, The Local Station. Eric, what about the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office's dash cam video or perhaps body camera video of this incident? So to my understanding, uh, only so many cars have actual dash cam video. However, a spokesperson for JSO says that there is at least one body cam video uh, that she says supports uh, the statement that that written statement that they put out on Friday. Now, we did, of course, uh, submit a uh, request to get a copy of that uh, video. And right now it's just a matter of time uh, before we get it, or shall I say a matter of time before JSO actually releases that footage. Tarek. All right, Eric Avenia reporting to us live. Thanks, Eric. Starts now. Tonight on News for Jackson 11, a woman hurt during a police chase on Jacksonville's west side is speaking out about what she calls a terrifying experience. The two cops, are, where one was, I think, behind him and one was to his right, follow him. And Over I'm like, the median? And into my lane. And now I have three vehicles coming at me. That is Kathleen Holt. She suffered a broken foot when a police cruiser rammed into her SUV during that police chase. That pursuit happened on Roosevelt Boulevard last Thursday. News for Jack's reporter Eric Avenier is joining us live from JSO headquarters with more on how Holt says that she was hurt. Eric? Yeah, well, let's uh, put things into perspective. Last Friday, JSO released a written statement saying that two of their uh, police units crashed into each other while chasing the driver of that stolen uh, pickup truck. They say the collision led to one of their police cruisers uh, cross, uh, crossing over into the median and then into oncoming traffic where it uh, struck Holt's SUV. But Holt says, hold on, it didn't happen exactly that way. Kathleen Holt says she would never have suffered a broken foot had police not chased 17-year-old Marquise Felton into oncoming traffic along Roosevelt Boulevard. I'm like, oh no, <laughs> boom, and it was over. Holt says Felton's stolen pickup truck hit this police car, forcing it to go airborne through this fence. Then she said the pickup struck this police SUV, forcing it to veer right into her SUV. The crash left her with a broken foot. Her attorney, John Phillips, not only questions why JSO never held a news conference to address what happened, but also questioned if attempting to apprehend Felton on a busy roadway outweighed public safety. Certainly the 17-year-old that, that started this should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. But apprehending him shouldn't put dozens or hundreds of civilians at stake. JSO says Felton was one of two people wearing a face mask inside a pickup truck that was reported stolen. Police say when they tried to stop the vehicle, he took off and led them on an eight-mile chase. After Holt was injured, police say the suspect's stolen pickup truck continued north before crashing in a vacant lot. After Felton and another unidentified person were taken into custody, police say they found a loaded rifle in the pickup truck. As for Holt's broken foot, it has to have surgery. It needs plates and screws. And I'm not I'm not a medical person. Uh, as soon as he said surgery, I'm like. Mm. Now, Holt and her attorney are filing a lawsuit against JSO. Holt's attorney says JSO neglected public safety uh, when officers chased after a stolen pickup truck on a busy roadway, resulting in his client being injured. Reporting live from outside JSO headquarters, Eric Avenier, Channel 4, The Local Station. Eric.